So we're almost a quarter way into the 2022 NBA season, and there has been 10 players that have been a nice surprise to me this season. Now, I'm not saying that they were a nice surprise because I thought they were going to be bad or I uh, didn't think that they were going to be good at all. No, I just think they're playing better than what I expected going into the season. So what is going on, everybody? How is everybody doing today? Yeah, I'm just going to give you 10 guys that have been a pleasant surprise for me. Just remember, this is my list. It's opinionated. It's subjective. There's no factual, uh, objective, scientific reason for this list. It's just my list. And if you guys have players that have been a nice surprise to you that I don't mention, please let me know down below. And if you do enjoy the videos, I would appreciate you dropping a thumbs up. So the first one is DeMar DeRozan of the Chicago Bulls. The Bulls have been really freaking good this season, and it's mainly because of the new additions of Caruso, Lonzo Ball, and most notably, DeMar DeRozan. DeRozan is averaging 26 points, 6 rebounds, 4 assists, and you know what? He's shooting 34% from 3, which is fine because he's actually taking over 2 attempts a night, which doesn't really happen out of DeMar DeRozan. He's played like this before in Toronto, don't get me wrong, but he's only finished top 10 in MVP voting once he finished eighth once and this DeMar DeRozan right now is a top five candidate in MVP voting in my opinion if the season ended today next up we have Harrison Barnes of the Sacramento Kings who's basically having a career year for Sacramento this year in 12 games he's averaging 21 points eight and a half rebounds on crazy efficiency 49 percent from the field 42% from three, 86% from the line, and just look, like, just watching him out there, he's just been so much more of a creative scorer. Now, I wouldn't say his efficiency is anything crazy, and it's not too big of a surprise because he's had these efficient seasons before. Last year, he was fairly efficient for the Kings, but I feel like he's just scoring in a variety of ways this season. Now, his scoring output might drop when De'Aaron Fox gets back on track because this maybe is due to De'Aaron Fox off to a pretty poor start, but either way, I'm liking what Harrison Barnes is doing this year, and it's been a pleasant surprise for somebody that I was like, ah, I don't know if like he really fits the Kings' future. Is he really going to help them out this year that much? Or they try to move him for Ben Simmons, and right now, he's looking like he's a big part of this team's hopeful success for the season to try to make the play-in tournament. Coming in at number three is Miles Bridges. Now, I thought that Bridges could break out this year. Uh, I thought he could maybe sniff out the most improved conversation, but I didn't think he was going to be this good right away. Someone that's averaging 21 points, that's just leading the Hornets. Did not expect him to lead the Hornets in scoring over Lamelo, Hayward, and Rozier. Seven rebounds, three assists. Now, his efficiency isn't the greatest, shooting 43% from the field, 34% from three, and 78% from the line. But you know what I just like to see? Him taking 17 shots a night. 17! His previous career high was 11 in his sophomore year. He only took nine shots a night lasher. So now he's doubling his shot output. And that's what I want to see for somebody that the Hornets invested in. They spent a lottery pick on. They gave up Shea Gilders Alexander to move down a pick to get Miles Bridges. This is what I like to see. This is not what maybe like the Knicks have done with Kevin Knox or the, the Magic have done with Mo Bombo or the Kings with Marvin Bagley. This is what I like to see. Run your offense through Miles Bridges. Set up design plays for him and get him a crap ton of shots because if he can score 21 a night on this, you found yourself a keeper. Coming in at number four, we have Chris Dorte. He's the only rookie on this list. Now, I expected Chris Dorte to be good right away just because he was more experienced in college, one of the more older players coming out of the 2021 NBA draft. But I didn't think he was going to make this big of an impact right away and hitting these 30-foot shots from the logo right away. He's averaging 15 points, four rebounds, two assists, shooting 40% from three. This man's going to shoot at a 40% uh, clip from three right away. 13 games into the season, he hustles on defense. He's somebody you want. I know that a lot of teams that picked after the Pacers at 13 wanted to trade up. I know the New York Knicks wanted to trade up and give Chris Storte. They were willing to give up like their two first round picks, but the Pacers were locked in on him, and rightfully so, because he's been a pleasant surprise for that team that's dealt with some injuries this year to Brogdon, Levert, and TJ Warren. Next up, we have Tyler Hero of the Miami Heat. Now, I knew that Tyler Hero was going to bounce back because he was so good in his rookie year. I didn't think that the, his sophomore year, it was just like was the true hero because it was just a sophomore slump, but I didn't expect him to just be averaging 21 points in through the first. 12 games at the moment i'm recording this five rebounds four assists shooting about 40 percent from three being able to do it all in isolation off the dribble catch and shoots in transition he's just been a creative scorer this year i have him on my fantasy team in a keeper league so i'm excited talking about him and yeah he's been a pleasant surprise i expected him to maybe bounce back as like a 16 17 point uh per game scorer he could regress uh down to that eventually because we're at such a small sample size of 12 games 
but I'm just liking what I'm seeing from Tower Hero this year. Coming in at number six, we have Cole Anthony. And if you watched my 2020 draft live stream, you know I really wanted the Knicks to take Cole Anthony, and I wouldn't have mind them taking uh, him at the OB Toppin pick, but more kind of notably, like, was hoping he would fall to the quickly pick. But that definitely didn't happen. The Orlando Magic got him at pick 15. He had an up-and-down rookie season, wasn't the most efficient, but he definitely showed flashes that he could take over games, uh, and the Magic weren't great last year. Anyway, they're not great this year, but he has been off to a hot start. He's averaging 19 points, 7 rebounds for Cole Anthony. That's a nice surprise. 5 assists as well, shooting 44% from the field, 39 from 3. That's very nice from somebody that was shooting 32% last year, and he's shooting 85% from the line in his first 12 games. He's been able to do it in isolation just as a playmaker. I love his transition style of play, the way he just pushes the ball. He's very quick with the ball in his hands. He's good in the pick and roll. I'm loving Cole Anthony. You know I loved him out of UNC because I'm a UNC fan. So shout out to Cole Anthony this year. It's been a nice surprise to see him as one of the best, I guess, you can look at him as like a top six guy from the 2020 class right now. Coming in at number seven, we have Jakob Pertl, a player that I had no eyes set on for this season. I know he's going to get a lot of minutes due to the Spurs not having a lot of bigs. Like Thad Young, they cut Lucas Shalmanich, they got Jakob Pertl, Drew Eubanks. Yeah, not a lot going on there in that Spurs front court. But he's averaging 14 points, 10 rebounds, 2 and half assists in 7 games. Now he is dealing um, in the NBA's uh, health and safety protocols uh, around COVID-19. So yeah, he hasn't played as many games as some of these other guys. But in those 7 games... He's probably given me enough confidence that he could do this throughout the season due to his sure volume at that five. Shooting at a 65% clip, don't get him to the free throw line. Or if you're an opposing team, you want to get him to the free throw line because he's hitting like 30% of those. But yeah, he's just been a dog inside. He's been getting his rebounds. He's been a solid rim protector for them as well. He is averaging over a block a game this season. I wouldn't say he's your Rudy Gobert or your Joel Embiid, but he's shown nice enough where, you know what? He's still only 26 years old. He's going to be a free agent at the end of the season. Why not stick to him long term maybe as a nice rotational big? Because like maybe like the New Orleans Noel guy, give him that type of contract. He could be your backup center long term. And speaking of centers... Coming at at number eight, Montrezl Harrell. I, I will have a couple honorable mentions at the end of this. And Montrezl Harrell for the Wizards has been very good this year. 18 points, 9 rebounds, 64% from the field. I don't think his defense has been that bad kind of at the end of his Clippers tenure. I don't think it's still like, like I just mentioned, Rudy Gobert, Joel Embiid, Miles Turner levels. But it's not like completely out of the equation where he's a complete liability out there. And he has just been a monster inside for them. For a Wizards team that I think is doing better than I expected. There was 10 teams that I think have been a nice surprise. Definitely the Wizards would make that list. And it's a big part of Montrezl Harrell and a couple of the guys they got from uh, the Lakers trade as well. So shout out to Montrezl Harrell this year. Uh, he's on a one-year deal as well. Just under $10 million. So he's in a contract year. Maybe that's why he's balling out. Coming in at number nine, we have Anthony Simons of the Portland Trailblazers. Now, Anthony Simons is probably the Blazers' best young player, their top young asset. He's still only 22 years old. He was a first-round pick in the 2018 NBA draft out of IMG Academy. Averaging 12 points this year so far in 12 games. Been a nice player coming off the bench. And the thing I love about him so far is his field goal efficiency. So basically, his career high was in, in his rookie year where he took a shot a night, 44%. Sophomore year goes up to 39%. Junior year goes up to 41% last year. And now it's at 45%. That's the improvement I want to see. That's the growth I want to see. And his three-point percentage isn't as good as it was last year where he shot 42%. But he's still shooting 38% on a higher volume. So he's taking about six threes a night and shooting at 38% from the field, from three, excuse me. That's amazing. And that's what I want to see at Anthony Simons if he wants to have a long-term role there in Portland. And then finally at number 10, it's a 31-year-old. It's Ricky Rubio. Yeah, I mean, like, maybe it's a thing with Ricky Rubio joining new teams. He plays really well. Because if you watched him in Phoenix, I believe it was in 20... It was in 2020. He started off really hot for that Phoenix team. The Suns were doing well, and then he cooled off, don't get me wrong, um, by the end of that. He didn't really play that well in Minnesota last year, but this year for the Cavs, 14 points, 4 rebounds, 7 assists, shooting 41% from 3. Like, what? <laughs> like, what? Are you kidding me, Ricky Rubio? He's going to have a more expanded role due to Colin Sexton being out for the foreseeable future. And he has one of the more crazier games this year. And I, it had, like, unfortunately went up against my favorite team. I'm pulling up the box score right here. 13 for 19 from the field. 8 for 9 from 3. He drops 37 points and 10 assists against the Knicks on November 7th. Like, what? Are you kidding me? But yeah, Rubio has been a pleasant surprise this year. 
And then a few honorable mentions that you could have put in here. I didn't really want to put too many rookies, but it's nice to see that uh, Scotty Barnes is uh, playing at this high of the level right away. But Jonas Valanciunas for the Pelicans. But I kind of knew with Zion out, um, he's going to have a more expanded role. And he's been a beast for them this year in a pretty, like, disappointing season so far. And then Seth Curry, what he is doing for the Philadelphia 76ers. Then you can even throw in Austin Reeves for the LA Lakers. He's been a nice surprise um, uh, that I've been seeing from them. And then maybe, like, Obi Toppin? I don't know. But yeah, those are some honorable mentions. Let me know what you guys think down below. Hope you guys did enjoy. Job like if you did. Catch y'all on the next one. Peace.